Welcome to another episode of National Divorce Talk Raw. We're going to be reviewing episode seven of the Calixit documentary. Now, first thing to know, Calixit documentary by Warner Brothers Music, Interval Presents, and in partnership with Awfully Nice Production Company is awesome storytelling. Very entertaining. Even people who don't really like the Calix movement or believe in it uh, say it's a great storytelling and very entertaining. So I encourage everybody to check out the Calix documentary. All of the parts by Warner Brothers Music, Interval Presents, Awfully Nice Production Company. We're going to be doing a review of Episode 7. And again, we're not saying this was said, but we just want to make sure some of the facts are cleared. There was some misinformation provided, and we want to clear that up, and we'll do that in just a second. Welcome. This is the uh, Yes, California Cal Exit Movement Review of the Calixit documentary, Interval Presents on the Calixit Movement, uh, episode seven. And this one's entitled, Stephen Marsh Lies. Now again, incredible storytelling, as we said right here, but some of the facts, maybe one or two facts each episode seem to be off. And so we do these videos just to make sure that you have the correct information. Again, we are very appreciative because this documentary has 90% got the story right. And they did something that no one else in the media would do. They actually tried to tell the story accurately. So this is the first time the Calix story is largely being told accurately and correctly. There are some technical facts that I disagree with. I don't agree with the general outline of the story and the, tell, the tale that they're telling and roughly the characters and how it was involved and roughly what it's about or the sentimentality or the emotions behind it occasionally some technical facts will be incorrect and if you know me you know that i don't tolerate that at all so um some people think i'm too strict about that but this is about clearing up the facts i want to do that so the first i want to point out uh the first thing that is stephen marsh is a author of a book on secession and so he was reviewed uh, or interviewed for this documentary. Now, let me show you a little bit about Stephen Marsh real quick. So who's Stephen Marsh? He's a Canadian novelist and essayist and cultural commentator. He's educated in the Canadian University of King's College and the City University, City College of New York. He has a doctorate in English drama and he taught Renaissance drama at New York. So his background is in English and drama, not economics, not politics, not government. He's an essayist, a novelist who has a background in drama and English. And yet for this documentary, he's seen as an expert because he wrote a book on secession. And yeah, it was pretty good. I read it, but he got some facts wrong. And this is the thing I want you to remember. A guy with a degree in Renaissance art and English is being referred to as the guy who has the facts correct for the documentary. Think about that. English Renaissance teachers like, no, I, I know about all these intricacies of international economics and American government. Based upon what? That you have no background on the subject? And he's not even an American. He's a Canadian. So, and he's talking about how American government works. So with no educated background into that. So first thing is Stephen Marsh says the U.S. government won't pay pensions to people who are part of the U.S. government. He said that about minute 550 to 620. And then he said, because of that, they aren't serious. So let me show you that real quick. Let me check 550 to 620. 
Give it a second. Sorry. We'll get rid of that in a second. Okay. Okay, so we're not serious because we think that the American government would pay pensions to Californians who aren't part of America. What we said was that you could have dual citizenship and you could have, you would retain your American citizenship and you would have California citizenship. Now, if you wanted to renounce your American citizenship, that'd be up to you. But in order for California to be independent, we wouldn't do that. Everybody would retain the American citizenship. They would not renounce it. And then they would get in uh, California citizenship. So we said you'd have this dual citizenship. And with that, you would still be getting uh, Social Security checks from the federal government, even though you weren't part of America because you had renounced uh, because you hadn't renounced your American citizenship. So you're not part of America, but you haven't renounced your U.S. citizenship. And he's saying uh, because we think you're going to get these checks, we're not serious and we don't know what's going on. Well, let me show you how he's dead wrong and presenting the facts wrong. By the way, we presented all of this data. Somehow none of it was mentioned in the documentary at all. But let me show you. So here's how the um, English professor, Renaissance uh, professor is wrong. Um, here are all of the countries that allow dual citizenship. So you notice there's about 60. Um, it's about two thirds or at least 60% of all countries on earth allow dual citizenship. Hmm. Uh, there's a couple countries where you can't, you know, places like Mongolia and China and Djibouti. Um, dual citizenship with the United States. What countries allow dual citizenship with the U.S.? Well, about 50. Albania, Iraq, Ireland, Armenia, Australia, Israel, Italy, uh, Russia, Slovakia, uh, Kosovo, Denmark, Spain, France, Switzerland, Finland, Morocco, Czech Republic, Greece, Norway, Germany, Hungary, the Philippines, Zambia. So there's about 50, 60 countries, including most of Europe, that allow dual citizenship with the U.S. So you can get dual citizenship. Most countries on the planet have dual citizenship. Uh, most countries in Europe have dual citizenship with the U.S. And about 50 to 60 countries have dual citizenship with the U.S. Perfectly legal. Now, here you go. Getting Social Security while living abroad. Elder answer law. So let me get rid of that. Social Security Administration will send checks to anyone who's eligible for benefits and is living abroad. There are a few countries where the Social Security Administration is not allowed to send checks, like Cuba and North Korea. Also, the SSA generally does not send checks to Vietnam or parts of the former Soviet Union, Armenia, Estonia, Latvia, Lithuania, Russia. So if you're not going to live in Vietnam or Cambodia or the former Soviet Republic or these pariah states of Cuba and North Korea, which is about less than 10 countries on the earth, then you can get your Social Security check anywhere as long as you still retain your U.S. citizenship. That is the law. So how did Stephen Marsh get it so wrong? Many countries allow dual citizenship, and many countries allow dual citizenship with the U.S., and the U.S. allows that. And uh, it's been the law since the creation of the Social Security Administration, I think, what, in the 1940s, that checks are sent abroad as long as you have U.S. citizenship. So how did a English Renaissance professor get these basic facts of American law so wrong? I just showed you what the facts are. Again, none of that was mentioned at all. We already explained that there's multiple countries you can get dual citizenship, and we already explained social security checks are sent anywhere in the world. All of this was somehow scrapped and not mentioned in the documentary. Okay. Um, then he goes, well, California, you can't secede because the U.S. government can just shut things off like the Internet. So Stephen Marsh says, watch out, because America could just shut off your Internet, California. 
Let me show you that. That's at minute 21 to 22. Give it a second. So let me show you how that's dead wrong. So here's a map of the global internet. Um, as you can see, there's not many cables in the center of America. There's a ton of cables, including these purple lines, which means uh, major, major lines of data. See how they're all clustered here around California? So if you cut off California, you've cut off America's access to Asia, or at least 50% of America's access to Asia. And a lot of the internet feed goes directly into California and then is fed into America. Here's another map. Uh, these are submarine fiber optic cables. Um, these are hard physical infrastructure. So you can see uh, there's hard physical infrastructure coming from the Southern Cross all the way out to Hawaii, from uh, sea-based Asians to the US, the major Asian American gateway for data, the data from Japan and data from the rest of, of uh, South America. So goes to Hawaii, then you can see it feeds into New Zealand, Australia. Uh, here's a data line from Japan and then other data lines from Southeast Asia. Now there are additional data lines coming up here, but as you can see, if you cut off California, you've now cut off half the bandwidth of your internet cable from Asia. And additionally, a lot of the internet hard physical cables go directly from Asia to California. Secondly, here's this map. This is a uh, maps that explain the internet by Vox News. Here you go. 40 maps that explain the internet. And then we're going to go to map 20. Ah, Silicon Valley, capital of the internet with the most internet hubs and internet infrastructure and also where the internet started here in California. Isn't that interesting? And I can show you that. So. Where's where the internet started? In California, there you go. Then half the internet connections were just in California in the 70s. Then they start expanding, but uh, a fourth of the internet connections are just in California for all of America. Up to 1984, it's about a fifth. Uh, first internet backbone with uh, two of the three nodes on the entire West Coast located here in California. And then a global network. And you can notice that a lot of the lines there's a lot of lines from America to Europe, but there's equally as many lines from uh, America to Australia, and that's through California. So California has a lot of internet infrastructure. It has a lot of direct lines to Asia. It started the internet, and it provides most of the internet infrastructure. So how are you going to shut all that down? So he said, because we didn't get that, that's dumb. Turns out that's just dumb to say he's going to shut off the internet. That's, that's dumb. That's not the way that it works, et cetera. Secondly, when he's talking about America has all the cards, that's not true. So if California secedes, we've talked to a lot of people and everybody says California is going to have to take over part of the debt. So California can just say we don't want to pay our part of the debt. So let's say America says we're going to shut off the Internet. You're an independent country, California. California can go, OK, well, we're not going to send you 90 percent of the fruits and vegetables that you depend on us for that you can't get anywhere else in the world. 90% of the fruits and vegetables, so you'll be reduced to potatoes and steak and chicken, period. That's a huge bargaining chip. I've mentioned that many times to the documentary crew, not mentioned at all about a bargaining chip at all. Secondly, the debt. If California uh, leaves, a lot of places when they secede have to take on debt. That means California's got to make annual payments of debt to America. It could just not make that payment. That's a negotiation chip. The paying off the debt and the cutting off of 90% of the fruits and vegetables was not mentioned by Stephen Marsh or the documentary crew at all, even though we mentioned those are negotiation tips for America. So, and his idea that you could cut off the internet is just dumb. I showed you the amount of infrastructure. Uh, 
So Stephen Marsh also says double identity papers from everybody may mean that you may not want to secede. So if you want to retain your U.S. citizenship like we proposed in CalExit, maybe you're not serious about secession. Um, are you are you really serious about secession? Uh, then Stephen Marsh says at about 25 minutes in, really, are you really willing to say that you're not an American? Are you really willing to say that you're not an American or you just hate the American government, which is very American? So let me show you that. It's about 25 minutes in. So here we go, Stephen Marsh. Do you really hate America, California? Uh, or are you just mad with the government? Well, let me show you how it's kind of a silly question. Um, so here you go. Here is a video of a guy. Uh, he's trying to get Californians to be proud about the American flag. And the whole video is about how nobody at Berkeley University wants to have anything to do Okay, so that's a bunch of average Californians saying F America to the American flag. That video came out uh, five years ago. Okay, here's another one. Why are Californians offended by the American flag on a police vehicle? Can flying the American flag in California get you in trouble? That's a real question one year ago, and here's why. Californians freaked out when Laguna Beach put the American flag on their police cars and they made them take it down. That's right, a California city put American flags on the police cars, Californians freaked out and said, take those flags down. Um, there you go. So it doesn't matter. Uh, people hated that. So they had to take the American flag off police cars. Here you go. Now, if you type in Californians disgusted by the American flag, are Californians offended by the American flag? California declares American flag offensive. Uh, California praises Nike for pulling the American flag shoe. Um, California high school bans American flag. California bans American flag again. Uh, let's see. Laguna Beach. Do, is the American flag aggressive for Californians? Uh, this uh, California teacher makes fun of the American flag. Um so that you can just type that in and see that. But that's that's not all. Let me show you a little bit here. So let's go here. And I want to do share screen. So here you go. Um, Sacramento Kings game, the entire team takes a knee. Taking a knee is a sign that you're not proud to be an American and you believe this country has real problems. A lot of patriots of America hated that they did that. Colin Kaepernick started that trend, and he's a Californian. So a Californian started this. Colin Kaepernick started it. One of the uh, top guys to pick it up was David West, also a Californian. One of the top athletes outside of basketball to support that was Megan Rap Rapinoe, a Californian. Also, Karim Abdul-Jabbar was uh, supported. But you also had military soldiers. Now, this is not normally seen. Rich Madrid, uh, a veteran, backed it. Janae Irvin was the only military person who refused to salute the American flag, and she was from California. Janae Irvin, only military person ever recently to refuse to support the American flag because she doesn't like it. She was happened to be from California. 
Uh, here's a couple more veterans who backed Colin Kaepernick. Here's a couple newspapers who backed Colin Kaepernick and his hate of America. A couple celebrities. And then this is my favorite. 2010, California school kicks out students who wore American flag. 2011, California government official bans U.S. flag. Uh, 2012, Napa Valley banned uh, American flags as car cover. 2014, Murrieta uh, burned American flags as citizens were arrested. Uh, 2014, Calexico displays an insult to the American people. 2014, San Diego, uh, they defaced the American flag. 2014, San Diego, man is told to take down the American flag in his apartment complex. 2015, San Diego also. 2015, Irvine, uh, students at the college vote to ban the American flag. Yuba, California school forces students to change American flag t-shirt. 2016, Riverside, firefighters forced to remove flag. Firefighters. 2016, Clovis, man ordered to take down flag. 2016, Folsom, American flag ripped from National Guard soldiers home. 2016, Trump for supporters had their American flag torched. And I just did a video where I showed you people in Venice. And they were asking people in Venice, do you want to be associated with American flag? And they were like, no. So I showed you a video from Berkeley. That's in NorCal. And the last week I showed you a video from Venice Beach. That's in SoCal where people were discussed by the American flag. And I just showed you a bunch of references throughout the last 10 years of California government officials and at least multiple California cities and California school boards saying, get that disgusting American flag out of here. 32% of American uh, Californians said they wanted to secede from America immediately, according to Reuters, Ipsos, Stanford University, and Berkeley University. But that poll was not mentioned in the documentary. So you're not going to hear three separate polls said one third of Californians said immediately secede. I don't want to be seen as an American. You're not going to hear about how Colin Kaepernick and the taking a knee because America is a racist country started here. You're not going to hear about how California has more cities than any state in America that refuse to salute the American flag. You're not going to hear about how California is the only place where veterans refuse to salute the American flag. So you're not going to hear about this. So what you're going to hear is Stephen Marsh say, are you sure you really hate America? Or are you just complaining about the government? Um, I just showed you multiple instances where Californians don't want to have anything to do with the American flag. That is hate on America. Again, all of this data was provided to the documentary crew. None of it made it into the documentary at all. Two last points. The documentary compared what happened to Ukraine and Russia and the Chiapas in Mexico to the proposed plan for CalExit. That is ridiculous. So let me explain. Ukraine gave up their nuclear weapons and then Russia invaded. That's the story in this documentary saying California wants to give up its nuclear weapons. We'll just get invaded because look at Ukraine. The moment they gave up their nuclear weapons, they were invaded by Russia, right? So Ukraine gives up nuclear weapons, gets invaded, straight causality. That's wrong. Secondly, they said, um, but here's the thing. Ukraine left on their own without Russia's approval. And the Russians always felt cheated because they weren't sure they would allow to do that. So Ukraine voted to leave when Russia was very weak. And Russians have since that time felt that that was a historical wrong and that they were cheated. That's totally different than what we're proposing in CalExit. So in CalExit, we're proposing the American government or 51% of the American people say, go ahead and get out. This would be the equivalent of Ukraine going to Russia and waiting for 51% of Russians to vote Ukraine out. That never happened. Ukraine just said we're out in the 1990s and the Russians felt that that was unfair and a historical loss for the last 15 years. There was never a Russian vote. There was never a request by Ukraine for a Russian vote. We have always said we're going to request a vote from America. So why would America invade us if they just let us go? And why would Russia invade Ukraine if the Russians actually voted for Ukraine to leave? They did it. Not comparable at all. It's not just nuclear weapons left and Russia in, uh, invaded. Ukraine left on their own. They did not leave in partnership with Russia. The Russians didn't get a vote. And then when there was a revolution in Ukraine, uh, Russia's chief um, rival, had people all over the place. Imagine if we had a revolution in California and Xi Jinping and top communist party officials are just hanging out in Sacramento that day. And, you know, 
Yeah, that would that would piss America off. We're not talking about inviting Russian or Chinese officials to come and officiate a new government of California. That's what Ukraine did. John McCain was there the day they had the Euro Maiden uh, conference. So we're not having Russian Chinese officials here. That's what Ukraine did. We're also asking for a vote. That's not what Ukraine did. So it's really not comparable at all. Second, then they compare the Chiapas uh, in Mexico to us in California. So the Chiapas fought a military battle for liberation from Mexico. CalExit is only using legal channels and it's going to get Americans to choose to vote us out. So in the Chiapas, they actually attacked, uh, the Chiapas rebels attacked Mexican government officials and the Mexican military. We're not going to attack any government officials. We have talked about this in CalExit for years. The Civil War was started when South Carolina attacked a federal installation. Because people would say, oh, you're seceding. We know what happened. Last time seceding, Civil War. No. Civil War happened when the South, South Carolina, attacked Fort Sumter. That is rebels attacking a government agency, government military installation. That's what also happened in the Chiapas. The Chiapas attacked and declared war on the Mexican government and attacked Mexican troops. We're not talking about attacking any federal installation. We've never entertained that idea. We've always said that's a stupid idea. We've never talked about being an antagonistic military to the U.S. We were talking about a vote. So completely not comparable at all, Chiapas, to us. It's more like uh, what happened with South Carolina is comparable to Chiapas in Mexico, and it's totally not the version we did because we're going for a vote. So um, Americans don't like California or feel that it's part of America, unlike Mexico's opinion that everyone's a Mexican and Russia's opinion that everyone is part of one Russian culture. So in the documentary, they talk about, you know, how Mexico views everybody as Mexicanos and you don't need to have separate identities. And we know that with Russia's invasion of Ukraine, Russia saying, you know, there's one Russian culture. Californians aren't saying that and neither are Americans. Californians do not view themselves as Americans or say that we have the same culture. And Americans do not view Californians as Americans and say that we have the same culture. So unlike Mexico, nobody's saying we're all one people. And unlike uh, uh, Russia, uh, we are not saying we have one culture. So again, not comparable at all. Documentary also said the age of international trade might be over. That is ridiculous. The age of international trade is not over. It's still going. It's running into some problems. But the idea that the world's economies are going to de-link from each other would mean economic chaos and collapse and poverty on levels we haven't seen since the 1930s. So no one's saying that. That's serious. International trade is not over. It's ridiculous to suggest that. Secondly, the documentary says that, well, maybe California could have achieved international recognition in the 1990s during the age of international trade, but not now. So they suggest in the documentary that the best time for us to ask for international recognition was in the 1990s during the age of NAFTA and international trade. But now there's a backlash against international trade, so it may not work. Um, that's kind of ridiculous. And I explained this to the documentary crew. None of this is in there. California's economy is dependent on international trade. There is no such future for California where we don't have international trade, period. We would have economic collapse. So the idea that we're going to uh, exist in a universe without international trade is ridiculous and not based upon us. Secondly, we've had the prime ministers of France and England at two prime ministers of France, one from England, Tony Blair, and I believe Francois Hollande. And the UN president, Ban Ki-moon, all act like California was a separate country. It was in the, I believe, the 2016 or 2018 Paris Climate Accords, where the French government acted like California was a separate country. Also, there's an article called Jerry Brown, President of the Independent Republic of California by Politico, where it talks about how Germany acted like California was a separate country. So none of this is mentioned. When they go, oh, you know... California may pull back and California may not be able to get international recognition now as it could as it could have in the 1990s. That is ridiculous. We've had more countries signing climate change deals with an independent California, more countries signing trade deals with an independent country, which are basically a treaty 
and a trade deal acting like California is a separate country in the last 10 years than we have had in the last 200 years. We've had more foreign heads of state act or act like we are a separate country. And we've had more European governments act like we're a separate country since the last, since the 1990s. And we did not have the UN president in the 1990s say, wow, you guys were so good at negotiation on climate change. You should do our job for us. So how is the 1990s a better climate for international recognition when we have more prime ministers and more governments of more different countries and the UN and political recognizing that all these countries already act like California as a nation when they didn't in the 1990s? How does that make sense? Again, we provided these facts. None of that was mentioned in the documentary. So we'll leave it there. Take a look at the comments. If the comments are relevant, we will cover them. If not, we won't. Oh, one final point. Um, at the very end is a clip by Lewis Marinelli where he says, if California seceded, it would suck and be horrible because they wouldn't be attached to the American Constitution, which is the only thing that makes California cool. So the documentary makes it very clear that Lewis Marinelli is the enemy of the Calexit movement. So in this episode, they make it real clear that Lewis does not like Calexit hates the idea and hates California. And they included a clip from him directly in the documentary. If you add that to episode one, where it's a clip of me saying Lewis has nothing to do with the movement and nobody recognizes him. And Theo Slater of the CMP saying nobody wants to know Lewis. So all that was in episode one. And you add it to this clip from Lewis in episode seven, where he slams California. It's clear from this documentary that Louis Marinelli is not part of the movement, not recognized, and is basically an enemy of the movement. Finally, I want to point out, I'm okay with harsh criticism. What I wasn't expecting was insults with no chance to respond. So John Christensen, in a previous episode, said we were nuts because we said California wouldn't have a water issue if it seceded. I wasn't given a chance to respond, and none of my facts were included. Then Stephen Marsh says we're not serious. Because he says you can't get Social Security in a foreign country. We just showed you how he's dead wrong. But I don't get a chance to respond to him. So this is still going on where we have experts who aren't experts in the subject. John Christensen is not a government expert and he did not work for the Water District. Okay, he, he writes news articles, which is great. Uh, but he's not a water expert. Stephen Marsh is, has no background in government or American law but he's an expert on American law. Both of them were wrong. Both of them got the facts wrong. And both of them said that we were wrong and not serious or nuts. When in fact they were wrong, gave misinformation and the documentary somehow did not provide any of our facts that we gave them related to this. So the documentary is great, great storytelling, but there's a couple times where, well, I'll leave it to you. <clears throat> What would you say if somebody comes up and says, apples aren't oranges, and that's all the documentary prints, and you had a bunch of facts that apples are in fact oranges, and all of your information was scrapped, and not one piece was mentioned at all. But this expert who says you're wrong, everything they say is mentioned, but all of your data is ripped away. Well, that happened with Stephen Marsh on the not serious comment, and that happened with John Christensen on the nuts comment. And it also happened with the Casey Michelle comment that Russia did much of the social media we showed you was no more than 20%. So great documentary, great storytelling, but there's a couple points where our information is lost and you are directly lied and misled to. So want to make sure that's clear. Okay. Let's see if we get good comments or we're just going to get harassed. Hey, James, doing well, doing well. Uh, yeah, that's what we talked about. We See, that's the thing, James. Southerners don't care if we leave, but Stephen Marsh says, you know, maybe you couldn't get the votes or you're not serious, you want to go. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, if the sound didn't work, I'm sorry, but I did explain what they said, and I gave the exact minute quotes, and I have a link to the video. So this is why I do redundant sources. So I said what they said. 
I said where you could find it and I provided a link to it and I pro properly framed it. So you can go check it out. Uh, oh, here's a um, Californian. I don't like the American flag either. Literally proving it. Because, James, the reason that we can't just call our reps and have California leave is that California newspapers have lied to Californians and told them that you Americans will never let us go. So California newspapers have lied to Californians and told them we can't get the votes. So the number one battle we fight here in CalExit is letting you know we could get the votes. And that's the point. We can get the votes from conservatives. We now have to convince Californians we could get the votes. Maybe I should run. That's a good. James, email me. James, email me, brother. And if anybody wants to email me, go ahead, marcus.ruiz.evans at gmail.com. Email me, James, and I will get in touch with you. Go ahead and do that. I hope you enjoyed the documentary. It's a great documentary, great storytelling, but we are based upon facts. And we have been at this for years. I remember when Texas versus white, we were trying to get that out in the media, and the media said Texas versus white doesn't exist. And then we fought for a year, and then they finally admitted it. And then they said, well, there's no province on consent of the states. And then we fought for two years, and then they finally admitted it. So we've seen this battle before where we provide facts. They're not covered, and experts say that we're dead wrong. And it turns out we were right, and the media was literally lying and misleading you. Saw it with the Texas versus white thing. The media would not admit Texas versus white, and they would not admit consent of the states. And I remember when we got the Berkeley top constitutional professor in California to back down and admit that we were right. It was a great day. So... We're going to keep doing it with the facts because the facts matter. Like I said, I will quit CalExit when we actually have a real fact-based debate. But today, you were lied to by Casey Michelle that Russia did much of the uh, influence for CalExit. You were lied to by John Christensen that uh, CalExit uh, is nuts to think that if it secedes, water's not an issue. And you were lied to by Stephen Marsh that... Uh, we can't get social security checks um, if you keep your U.S. citizenship. So that's all true. Exactly. And the facts matter. So I want to show you, we, we, it, we've we been at this for 10 years. We got big in 2016, six years ago. It took us six years to get one documentary that's 90% correct. It took six years to get one documentary that's 90% correct. It's not even 100% correct. Six years. So that's the point I want to make you. Imagine if these facts were out in 2016. We've been saying this for years. Uh, there was a CNN article that came out a few weeks ago that acknowledged 10 of our facts. And we were saying, wow, if that CNN article had been around in 2016. Because we were saying things in 2016 and everybody's saying you're wrong. Then in 2022, a few weeks ago, CNN releases an article and backs up literally 10 of our facts in a row. They never did that before. It took six years. It took six years for CNN to acknowledge 10 of the Calyx of facts. We've been saying this for years. Six years for CNN to finally admit some of what we were saying. Six years to get one documentary that's 90% correct. So this is why I keep doing this, because they're lying. They just won't print the facts. When they print the facts, we can win. And I hope you see that. I hope you see. Six years to get CNN to admit the facts. Six years to get one documentary to get the facts, and they only got it 90% right, and there's a couple things that they outright lied. This is what we're up against. But it also means we can win. 
if they were talking about the facts, then then we should be scared because it means people were going to see the facts and still decide against us. They're hiding the facts from you because they know when you know the facts, what's going to happen. Think about it. Okay. Talk to you soon. One more episode of the documentary left. We'll do a review then. Thank you.